The Heberman Lab Podcast number four. Find your temperature minimum to defeat jet lag, shift work, and sleeplessness. Let's summarize it. Disclaimer, Andrew Huberman is a professor, not a doctor. He does not prescribe anything. Talk to a medical professional before applying his tools. The topic of this podcast was mainly how to conquer jet lag and shift work. First off, there are many negative impacts to jet lag and shift work including a proven reduction in lifespan. The purpose of this podcast was not to talk about the detriment, but rather to mitigate it. So we will not be discussing these side effects in depth. Let's remind ourselves about the perfect schedule. You wanna get as much light as possible when you wanna be awake and as little as possible when you wanna be asleep. We remember our two light anchors, sunrise and sunset. For sunrise, try to get exposed to at least 100,000 lux, a measurement of light, before 9 a.m assuming you wake up between 5 and 8 a.m. You should not look at an insanely bright 100,000 lux light as the neurons in your eye sum the total photon energy viewed within a certain time frame. There is a crucial topic we need to cover before going any further, your temperature minimum. minimum. This is the point in every 24 hour cycle when your body temperature is the lowest, 90 minutes to two hours before your average waking time. To find this point, simply average three to seven consecutive wake up times, as in the point where you actually get up for the day, not just waking up in the middle of the night briefly. From there, look back 90 minutes to two hours and you'll know when your temperature minimum is. For example, if you wake up on average at 6 a.m., your temperature minimum will be around four to 4.30 a.m. This is the absolute reference point for shifting your circadian clock. We'll use two protocols, the phase advance protocol and the phase delay protocol. Phase advance causes you to wake up earlier and fall asleep earlier. This is done by viewing brighter lights within four hours after your temperature minimum. Phase delay causes you to wake up later and fall asleep later. This is done by viewing brighter lights within four hours before your temperature minimum. The phase advance and phase delay protocols are essentially shifting our first light anchor according to our needs. Doing this allows a one to three hour shift in our temperature minimum and thereby circadian clock per day we do this. Now, jet lag. Jet lag can happen to anyone. You don't need to travel to get jet lagged. You may have a chaotic routine or have shifted your circadian clock such as viewing bright lights late at night. We will discuss jet lag from traveling just to give you more concrete tools to work with. There are two elements to jet lag. Travel fatigue from the experience of traveling and time zone change where the local sunlight and darkness can't match your internal circadian clock. Let's talk about traveling east or ahead of your regular time. You will want to use the phase advance protocol. Get up earlier, closer to your temperature minimum, and set your first light anchor. Start doing this days before travel if going to a radically different time zone. Traveling west or behind your local time tends to be easier because humans tend to be more capable of staying awake and alert than forcing ourselves to sleep. Here we'll use the phase delay protocol. Utilize caffeine, exercise, etc. to view light within four hours before your typical temperature minimum. If your trip is 48 hours or less, it's better to stay on your home schedule. You will experience travel fatigue, but that's simply from the experience of travel. It's not your circadian clock radically shifting. Again, your circadian clock will not shift more than one to three hours per day. To make this easier, consider carrying light pads and night shades to compensate for the sun. Be sure to track your regular circadian clock, especially the dead zone, so you know when you're not in danger of shifting your clock. See the previous summaries for more information about that. For shift workers, the rule of thumb is, if possible, try to stay on the same schedule for at least 14 days, including the weekends. View as much light as safely possible during the time you wanna be alert and awake or during your working hours, and as little light as possible when you wanna be asleep. It's beneficial once you're on your schedule to figure out your temperature minimum. From here, you'll know when your body temperature is increasing, where you'll wanna get light, and when it's decreasing, when you'll wanna avoid light. For parents with babies, babies follow more ultradian rhythms, those 90 minute cycles throughout the day and night, than they do circadian. It's important if you're having to map to a baby schedule to try and maintain your nervous system such that you're not going into heightened alertness when you would normally be sleeping. During the baby's ultradian rhythm when they sleep, if you would normally be sleeping, sleep if you can. If not, utilizing NSDR can be very beneficial. When sleep is fractured like this, it is especially important to set powerful light anchors during sunrise and sunset. A quick word on supplements for sleep, Huberman provides the website examine.com, not a sponsor, which links to quality studies regarding nearly all supplements. He mentions, again, magnesium threonate, theanine, and apigenin. To learn more about these, you can refer to previous summaries, watch the full Huberman Lab podcast, or search them on examine.com. A note about apigenin, it has big anti-estrogen effects, so that will be something to consider. Please do your own research on all supplements and talk to a medical professional. As always, this is a surface level dive into the Huberman Lab podcast. I recommend you watch the full episode linked below. Thanks for watching.